Hello everyone and welcome back to making a pod-like spacecraft in Blender for Kerbal Space Program. Uh, previously we have been doing sort of a general part of it where it could be for any program that you have a space pod for. But in this case we are definitely moving into the Kerbal Space Program specific portion as we are going to import it into Ker Kerbal Space Program through Unity. Uh, though the getting the stuff into Unity could be used for other Unity based games. Now in order to get into Kerbal Space Program though we would want Kerbal Space Program Part Tools. So in Google, type Kerbal Space Program Part Tools, and you will have this link here. In fact, you also have my own videos mentioned, describing how to do this before, but not that everybody looks at my older videos to find things. Anyway, official Part Tools add-on development Kerbal Space Program. So it is on the forums, uh, has been around for a while. This is the asset bundle package that you want. Um, there are older versions for older versions of Unity, but you, you should probably just go with this and especially use the version of Unity that they are recommending. I'm not going to tell you how to install Unity. You're going to have to deal with that. You'll get the Unity Hub and then you are going to be able to select which version that you want. I actually use 2019.3.15. F is for free, by the way. And so, yeah, I use a slightly different version, but it still works. Pay attention to these instructions. Okay, and you must do these, please, please, please. Okay, uh, it's gonna be complicated, and this is one reason why I'm not going through the entire procedure of getting part tools in to Unity, because there are these specific steps that you have to do, and I'm not gonna do them again. Uh, you have to uninstall the TM Pro package. That's a text mesh pro, as a way to handle text, uh, text, I guess. And then you have to get the exact one that the Kerbal Space Program Part Tools expects. Uh, so the point is that the one they have with it is a newer version, but the Part Tools expects an older version. So you have to get the older version and then import it into your Unity project. Disable validate references for that uh, asset compiler, actually, not asked. <laughs> asset uh, compiler and KSP assets, and then restart Unity, reopen your project, and then that's all you have to do. Well, okay. So assuming you can do all that, you will be able to import parts into Unity. Uh, assets, there's an import package here for custom package. We, once you have that, you'll have this KSP assets up here and KSP part tools under tools. Okay, so this is actually the upper stage of the VLM rocket, which I had done before, but we are going to get rid of that. I've got all these parts under Kerbal Modding, you see, and I'm going to create a new folder for CST100. We have the Blender stuff looking like this. This is not how we want it. So I'm going to, remember we moved everything? Well, we're going to move it all back. And I'm going to move the engines manually, actually, because I think we did something afterwards. But we are going to export it such that the center of mass of the objects, or what we would like to have as the center of the mass of the objects, is at zero, zero. For the arrow cap and the cap, I don't care really where the center of mass is. Uh, so we're just going to jettison them, and it probably won't matter too much. Uh, the colliders are clipping into this. Uh, and we don't have the te textures in here right now. We never brought them from Substance Painter into here, though we could do that. Um, the parts that I'm more concerned with as far as the center of mass are concerned is the service module. So we want it at zero, zero. We could manually shift the center of mass later, but let's not. Let's get rid of the reference images for now. Yeah, we'll we'll move the service module. It's handy to make sure that the top of it is some nice even number because we're going to be using that as the attachment node. So let's say one, that's the top of it. Okay, the engines too, we would like to move up. And how much have we moved up the service module? These are things that we could take, let's say we moved it up by 0.5, that'll be handy later. And we are moving the engines by 3.11. Uh, so, well, I'll make note of that, hopefully. Okay, so that their center of mass is in a good place. That's zero, zero. 
and you note that everything's overlapping so that's why we're only doing it now and then the heat shield also I don't want its center of mass to be way above it and so we're also going to move it so that center of mass is basically at zero zero right at the top there okay now we're going to go through everything one at a time uh, select the hierarchy for the abort engines so it's just this the colliders and the engines and I never tilted the colliders but hopefully that's gonna be all right going to go export FBX to the same folder and this time I'm gonna just say abort and just selected objects we don't have to worry about animation apply transform we can do uh, but we don't have any transforms to apply. We're at zero, 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 no rotation, no scale, no modifiers. So that's all nice. Okay, export the abort engines backslash to get out and it removed my stream. Oh no, I guess we have streamcast keys. Is that working? Okay, well, hopefully. All right, select hierarchy backslash. It's not showing my streamcast keys even though it says streamcast keys on. I don't know sometimes. Okay, this is floating above, but mm, all right, we'll do it legitimately. And right now we should probably uh, save as, just in case I accidentally save the Blender file. This is, I'm gonna call export with all the parts overlapped. Okay, and we are going to export this as FBX, and this will be AeroCat. Okay, and it's just those parts again, and backslash. Okay, then the cap, the little cap at the top. Select hierarchy, and we can go to orthographic view. It's floating quite a bit above things, and I'm going to move it. Okay, let's see what the number is initially. 1.18. I guess one good thing is that if we get them like this, their attachment nodes are not going to overlap, and... I guess it's actual, the cap's actual center is at zero, zero anyway, so zero. Okay, so its node is going to be at 1.1853 like it was before. Okay, so again, selecting both of these, file, export, FBX, and this is just cap. Okay, backslash on the numpad. Next up, the heat shield. Select hierarchy, backslash. This is fine, zero, zero, everything. Export, FBX, heat shield. I'll just say HS. Okay, odd. And here we select the entire hi hierarchy, including the interior. I'm just going for everything and file export FBX and I'm keeping the center mass where it is for now and pod and finally the service module again select hierarchy make sure that's what we want and file export FBX SM. Okay, now everything has been exported as FBX files that we can use for Unity. And let's check in Unity that it is all good. So again, going into my CST100 Blender folder, I will grab the FBX files and and I guess I'll show you the FBX files and the texture files here. Those are the ones we generated in Substance Painter. You can see in total, I've been very generous about the size that I'm going with here. So it's 23.3 megabytes. Note that the sort of demo uh, texture that I made for the initial example of not using Substance Painter would save us a lot of space, but we could scale down if we decide that the for instance, the pop blue that we made as a 2K texture uh, is too big. Right now it's uh, combining with the base color and the normal seven megabytes. If that's too big, or maybe the pod interior with its five megabyte normal map is too big, we could scale that down as necessary. The model itself is tame by comparison to the textures. 
you have to decide how much you want the textures to be larger or how much detail you want on the model itself. So you could add details on the model to save texture space as well. Okay, so we've got all these in here and we have to create materials out of each of these to assign them to these. These uh, models each have a material slot, the material slots for the materials that they have. This is just the abort motor, so it just has a steel one. And the aero cap just has pod blue, but some of our more complicated ones have a whole bunch. The pod itself has a ton. I can't, I, like I said, already did the seat. So if I search, you can click this button over here and search for the prior things that you have made. And so I've made the seat before. So this is the seat material. Make sure it's a material. This one, uh, some of the, uh, this is actually an FBX. <laughs> so uh, mat for material. So that's the seat material that I had before for that seat. And similarly, there was the seat steel I had before, mat. Okay, so those are assigned from previous. And so if you, you reuse materials, you can just go ahead and do that and apply. And now we're going to create the new materials. So create material. And I want to name it exactly what I have. SP underscore. And I forget what the first one was. So I'm just going to say pod blue because I know that one exists. Oh, pod blue. And I'm going to copy this so that I can paste it for the next ones too. So there's a pod blue one. There's a heat shield one. So material. And I'll go control V and I can get the root of it, heat shield, control C for copy, control V for paste. Uh, and I forgot which next one was, I think it was HRSI, the pod interior, HRSI, yeah. Okay. Now at this point, select all of the materials that you just created. They'll have this little icon here. And we have to make sure that they are materials that Kerbal Space Program is going to understand. So under shader, instead of standard, we have a KSP option here, assuming you imported part tools properly. And we are going to go with bumped specular. And now you have a main texture, a bump map, and a specular color. Note that you do not have a specular map. This is why we will have to use textures unlimited for certain things. And now we're going to go through, uh, we can change the specular color, by the way. Um, I think uh, it was noted that if you want things to show up at nighttime better, something like 46 or 48 on this would, would be good. That's just how it is. And now with the heat shield, we drag the two heat shield textures in, the base color and the normal map, and then fix. Every one of them will have to be fixed. Drag and drop, drag and drop, fix. Drag and drop. Okay, so we've got all of those applied. And now we go through our models and assign the materials. So that steel material gets assigned to that. On the arrow cap, we will assign the pod blue. And on the cap, we will also assign the pod blue. The pod has all the bunch, so HRSI. Pod blue, pod interior, RCS, the seat we already did, steel, and window. Apply. And SP was the actual Substance Painter one that we had before. We'll just delete that. That was for Substance Painter only. So we have these six parts. All right. So now we can get on with making them for Kerbal Space Program, exporting them for Kerbal Space Program. So you'll start with a scene, and then you create an empty called game object, and then you add a component, and that is a KSP component called Part Tools, and that's this thing. And you're going to set the URL to uh, some folder that you're going to export things to. I have this uh, game data folder. The game data folder has to have the squad folder and its contents in it. Otherwise, you're going to get some errors. Uh, I also have the JSI and the ASET folder for props, for raster prop monitor and all those things for the interior, if we want to add those things to it. This is just sort of a mock game data that's not part of the game that I use in order to make the models. So 
when I do that, it doesn't come up with anything here, but that is because when I did the setup here, and there'll be an initial setup when you do the part tools, and it'll ask you to set the data directory here, and I've already got it on that game data that I just pointed out. So since it's already on the game data, I want a subfolder in the game data. I don't want it to dump everything into game data like that. So I'm just gonna create a subfolder called CST100 here. So the main folder, the main game data folder you do in setup here, and it'll ask for it here when you initially do part tools. Sorry about that. Uh, it'll ask where to do the setup and you can set the directory there. Just make sure that it is a real game data folder. Anyway, so CST100 and then we, I know it's complicated. Uh, so I didn't explain it perfectly, alas. But we bring the abort motor in, then we select all these, delete the mesh renderer, add the mesh collider, convex. And now we need to make sure that these can produce thrust and ideally in the right direction. So uh, another uh, thing that we wanted to create is a new empty. And this we're going to rename as thrust transform. And note the syntax here. Uh, small t there, big T there, and we are going to make the blue arrow be the direction of our thrust. So the first thing is we're going to turn it like that, and we would like it on the abort motor, and we should, but we're in isometric view here, you can see that there. And I'm just going to go to the top view as best I can. I think there's probably some shortcut, but we'll be close enough here. And we are going to go like that, move it up. And we remember that we tilted it a little bit. And I think we want to rotate in the X direction by a little bit. Uh, that's the wrong way. So 185. Maybe a little bit more than that. And then also outside, that seems to be rotating in the Y. That's not too bad right there, actually. Let's see. I think I'll take that. The important thing is that for all these four, it has to be perfectly symmetrical. So I'm going to create a duplicate. And we are going to move it in the X direction. So it's on this one. And now the tilt in this direction is wrong. So we'll go negative five and that'll be right. We'll just go negative for the ones that we need to fix. Duplicate, duplicate, and then we'll go, we are going to move it in the Z, not the Y. Because in Blender, up and down is Z. In Unity, up and down is Y. So we don't want to move it up and down. We want to move it in Z. We'll change the negative. Uh, okay, rotation is complicated matters. <laughs> uh, maybe it is Y now? It is Y now. Okay, so forget everything I said. So now it's all wrong. Uh, the Y seems to be fine. It is the X that is wrong. Let's see if 75 works. Yeah, 75 is probably the right one. And we're going to duplicate it again. And we're going to change the X again, make it negative. And this will be back to 185 here. No, no. Um, it, it's going to be just five, I think. Okay. So they are symmetrical. They're not perfect, probably, but as long as they're symmetrical, it'll be balanced. Now, if you deliberately wanted it to go off to one side as it aborted, you could tweak one of them. Okay, but then we have our abort motor there with the tr thrust transforms. And instead of calling it new model, I will call it exactly what I had as the model name, which is abort, CSD 100 abort, and then click right. And then it should say that the .mu file is written down here. Okay, and if you're prudent, you will now save it. <laughs> okay, we have saved that so that we don't have to do that all over again. Arrow cap. 
This is easy. Take all the colliders. Remove the mesh renderer. Add the mesh collider. Convex. Make sure that it is hollow. See all the convex colliders are happily on the edge and not in the middle. And then we rename this arrow cap. And we can just write that. And save it. Saving it as a Unity scene just means that we can open it up again like that and if we need to make edits. Let's say I decide to update the textures and improve on them, then I can open it up quickly. Uh, the cap. There's just one collider and we remove it. Add the mesh collider. And again, this collider had a lot of polygons. We accidentally used the 72 side one, but Thankfully, the convex collider option will simplify it quite a lot. All right, heat shield, also very simple. Same thing, remove the collider, add the mesh collider. So to make sure it looks all right, um, sometimes that makes it look like the normals are on the wrong side. I hope the normals are on the right side. Okay, and then heat shield. There's no vector or anything we need to add to this one, but the next two will. We need to add the RCS thruster vectors as well as the solar panel vector. Okay, so the pod. Same deal. Select all things called collider. Remove the mesh renderer. Add the mesh collider. And everything should look good with the little green lines. The green lines are what are, what is important to us. I made the I think I made the cylinder up here a little bit too small. You see that I, I made it for the inner part and I not the outer part. That would mean that we can't really attach things to this properly. So let's take a look at that cylinder. Uh, we can certainly adjust it in here. We can change the scale of it. to scale it up. That might be a little bit too big. Okay, now it fits a little bit better. So, okay. Now, the RCS is our main issue here. Everything else is pretty much okay. But to make the RCS, we create an empty, but it's the green arrow that the RCS goes by. And we have all these little RCS thrusters pointing in interesting directions. Most of them are pointing up, and then there's the side ones. I think there's eight up ones and eight side ones. There might be a few others on it, but uh, actually for our operations, these are the only ones we need. And the syntax for that is RCS and then lowercase thruster. Why they have I mean, but RCS is an acronym, so I guess they, that's why they went like that. So for each of these, we have to place one of these vectors with the green arrow in the direction that we want it. I want the thruster firing in. Okay, I just noticed something that was going to mess us up. Uh, our game object is not at 000. That might be because of the game object I started out with. I think it was some sort of stage, but... Yeah, we want the game object to start at 0, 0, 0. Let me also check the other things. Now that we've started at 0, 0, 0, we need to move this RCS thruster vector to the right location. It's no longer in the correct location. Okay, and I will save this as pod before we work on the other RCS thrusters. But let me just quickly check everything else to make sure it's all right and they're all at 0, 0, 0 first. Okay, I have checked all the other things and we are ready to go here. So we've got this one RCS thruster and it's going to be a pain to make a whole bunch of these. We do want the pod to be the parent of it, so we just drag it onto the pod to make sure the... Well, I mean, actually we don't need it to be the parent of it just yet. We'll wait on that for a reason I'll explain. So we're going to create an empty and really we want this one, this one, and this one right now. Just those. Uh, we don't want an empty that is 
a child of the RCS thruster though. We just want it to be a child of the game object. That's important. Now we've got, actually, you know what? Let's duplicate this RCS thruster. Okay, we're gonna move it. We're going to move it down to where I want the RCS coming out of. And I'm gonna rotate it uh, basically 90 degrees in X. Let's see. Yeah, basically that's the idea. It looks like it's tilted down, but that was because of how the cone cut into the mesh, not because I actually tilted it down at the time. And it's basically pointing out of there. So I think that's okay. And we're going to duplicate that and move the new one up here. And maybe a little bit back. All right. So we've got these three, this one, this one, this one, and we're going to duplicate them for the ones on the opposite side. Once we have them in the right position, we should rename them all to RCS Thruster. They all have to be named the same. And that'll also help us keep track of which ones we have fixed. So we'll duplicate these. And this one we're going to have to move in the Z axis over to this side. And so it's here, that's fine, that's balanced. Oh, I didn't want to duplicate, I just wanted to rename. This one, we will move in the Z axis and also need to rotate. It's pointing this way, we want it pointing the other way, so we will go negative on the X axis, that's fine. And uh, same here, negative on Z and negative on X. Okay. So now we've got this set of six, but we need them on the opposite side. One trick to do that is to create a new empty that we will call block. And you note this empty is centered on zero, zero, zero right now. That is important. And we will take all our RCS thrusters, put in into this block, and we are going to duplicate the block, which means we also have another six RCS thrusters. We're going to take this block and rotate it around the y-axis by 180 degrees. And now, instead of just having the thrusters on this side, we have the same thrusters on the opposite side. So you see how that block worked out for us. Now we only need two over here. We can also create, uh, duplicate the block again, but we'll just delete some out of it. So this one will rotate by only 90 degrees. And that ends up, is it on this side? No, it's on that side. And so we'll, this one we don't have here, this one we don't have here, this one we don't, this one we don't. These two we might want to tweak. You can see the seats inside. Okay, which is good. Um, we might want to shift them both down. We can select both of them and then sort of shift them down and across. So how does that look? That looks okay. And then we can duplicate this one, this block again, and go 270, which will be on the opposite side. And we can double check that. The blocks don't have to be renamed. Nothing is gonna to refer to them. And so we've got one here and one there. So that's how we do RCS thrusters. Uh, if we want to be good about things, we'll just pull them all into the pod now and so that the pod is the parent of everything. And now we have to work on the hatch. Now the hatch we're going to do as a normal EVA hatch, just like we have in Kerbal. And to do that, I'm going to pull the parts from one that I've already done, namely the Lynx pod. Okay, so here we have the Lynx Neo cabin that I have. And we have the airlock and ladder here. And what these are are box colliders. And it's essential that they be uh, check marked is trigger. They are triggers, they're not actual colliders. That means that the Kerbals are not gonna bump into them like they would normal colliders. Uh, they will instead trigger a prompt. And in this case, it'll be an airlock prompt for that and a ladder prompt for this one. And what you'll notice is that these boxes are partly clipped into the collider of the spacecraft. We have to make sure of that. So the Lynx Collider is like this. It's basically form-fitting. And the airlock is going to clip in a little bit, and the ladder is going to clip in just a little bit. And combined, they look like this. 
And so the ladder will give the option to grab and then the airlock will, the trigger will give the option to go in. And additional things we need is we've got the tags for them. The ladder is tagged ladder. The airlock is tagged airlock. And they are both part of a particular layer. It has to be layer 21 and it has to be called part triggers. And we have all these layers. There's a layer called Kerbals for the IVA view. That's layer 16. And layer 21 is part triggers. And that will be anything that they interact with. So yeah, uh, Kerbals is where the IVA view is. And we'll get to that later on. But I'm just going to copy these. So this is something you can do. If you have another save, uh, another scene that you have stuff in, in Unity, you can go Control C, copy. And then we are going to go back to the CST 100. And so we are here with CST 100 in the pod. And I'm just going to paste. There they are. <laughs> and and once, so once you've done it, and once you've got them nice and everything, the right size that you want them to be, uh, you might want to experiment with that. And you'll note that it still has the right tag. It still has the right layer. But we do have them sort of in the wrong place, don't we? And I, I actually want to play the same trick I did with the RCS thrusters. I'm going to create an empty. I am going to add them to the empty temporarily. I'm going to rotate the... Hmm. I'm wondering why the empty is not at zero, zero, zero here. Uh, rotate. No, I don't want them like that. I wanted to rotate the empties to move them. The empty is there. I don't know why. Well, it's very focused on them. All right, fine. I guess I can't do it that way for some reason. Whatever. We're going to rotate them the hard way and try to make sure it matches that location. We're going to shift it over. Now, remember, uh, the parts where they're sort of meeting, that's actually... I think that's the inside. Uh, no, I, I maybe it's this way around. I forget which way around it is. Uh, well, once we're in Kerbal Space Program, they're either going to slide off of it the common errors you're going to see are they're sliding off of it and then that means that the ladder isn't clipped in right or it'll say hatch obstructed and that means that the airlock isn't quite right. I'm going to switch back to local. Local will give us the local rotation and axes just like in curl space program itself. I'm going to move that and I think I want the ladder to not cover this part up here, but more this part down here, right? The airlock seg segment seems fine, um, except maybe we want to rotate it a little bit more. Uh, let's do both at the same time. Okay, well, maybe it'll work out, maybe it won't. <laughs> we'll just leave those be. And that is how we do the airlock and ladder. I feel like maybe I want to pull them out a little bit more. It's always with trepidation. That'll take some testing to see whether it works out properly or not. But all right, we have those. I'll leave those outside. We'll have the we have the RCS blocks. I don't think we have anything else we need to work on here. So I'm going to save it and write it. Okay, then it wants to be saved again. That's what that asterisk means. It's uh, not saved yet. And so we have done that. And finally, we go on to the service module. Same deal, Collider, Mesh Renderer, Remove, and Physics, Mesh Collider, Add. Okay, so the mesh is only down here. There's no Collider up here, which means that you can't click on that part, you can't attach things to it, and also it's not going to collide with anything. And one thing we can do right away is the Sun Catcher for the solar panels. So we create an empty, and this time it's the blue arrow. So we want blue arrow down and the sun is going to catch the sunlight in this direction. So we'll have it like that. And I'm going to call this sun catcher, which is stand what we normally call it in Kerbal Space Program for this particular vector. 
So this is the direction that the sunlight will be detected in. With that, all that's left is the RCS ports, and we'll just make those for one of these pods and then use the same trick that we did before. So we are going to use the green arrow, uh, get the top view. I'm being very approximate here. It's possible to actually make the vectors in Blender already. Uh, if you want to position them very accurately or also get the numbers that you use for the cones to do the cutting and Use those as references for the position of the vectors, but I think it's sufficient to get them approximate as Long as they are symmetrical So we are going to use that and I'm going to duplicate that in the z-axis and that's the other one and then next We'll do the side one. And that has to be rotated in the x-axis. Oops, uh, the other way. And then duplicate. And move to the opposite side. Like that. And then duplicate. We'll move to this. And we'll rotate in Z for that. And we're going to position the vector like that ish. And in the top two, uh, yeah, we'll duplicate for the ones down here. Duplicate, move down. And for each of them, rotate in Z 180 so that they're pointing down. They're spaced a little bit differently. So we're going to move them. In fact, I'll just duplicate this one. So I'm going to delete the second one. Take this one, duplicate, move in Z. And then it'll be in the right place. Okay, so now we have those. There's a lot of them, seven on this thing. And again, they have to be renamed RCS Thruster. And then we'll create a block empty to carry all of them, and then rotate that around while duplicating. Okay, so game object, create empty, uh, just call it block for future reference. I don't like having two things named the game object anyway. And we pull all the RCS thrusters into it. The block should be at zero, zero, because unless we're rotating around zero, zero, we're not going to get them placed properly. And duplicate, and rotate by 90 degrees. Duplicate again, rotate by 180. Since these are all identical, it's easy. And duplicate again, rotate by 270. And we can verify that these are all in the right place. So that's over there. Okay, and then these are over here. And finally, these are over here. Okay. And we could tuck all these in to the model, that's fine. Like that. And even the sun catcher, I don't think it makes any difference, so I'll just leave it. And service module SM, we write, and then we'll also save the Unity file. Okay, having done all this and exported the service module, we have one more thing to do in, in Unity, and that is the interior. So let me, for reference, open up uh, interior I've already done, because otherwise I'll forget. I haven't done many interiors. There aren't that many interiors. Okay, so this is the Lynx cabin interior, and you'll see the inside faces and the seats and all. It's sort of, they, they're sort of at an angle instead of just flat. The important thing about the interior is that the top is going in the z the negative z axis so this way and so we've got a game object here and we're definitely going to be changing this cst100 and we'll just leave the model name model it doesn't matter it'll be its own and actually i'll call it cst100-int it'll be its own separate folder for the interior because interiors are special uh, so we have four seats here identified and we also have the model here pointed in this direction. Let's drag our 
pod model in here. And we can see the different orientation here. What we want is it pointing 90 degrees. And um, it looks like if we go 0 and x, that's the opposite of what we want. So we want to go uh, 180 and x. So now it's oriented the same. We do not want to change the 0, 0, 0 coordinate, by the way. So we'll leave it as is here, even though it seems offset from the Lynx capsule. And what we would like to do is, let me turn off the mesh renderer for the Lynx capsule for a sec. And maybe bring it out so that we can take a look at the stuff inside. So we've got the seats like this. That's different from the orientation of this pod. We don't need a lot of the stuff for this pod. Let's delete the colliders. Um, and it won't let you delete the colliders without unpacking the prefabs. So we'll unpack this. We just need the stuff for the interior here. Technically, we can get rid of this exterior stuff, but I'll hide that first. We'll keep the windows and the hatch. Actually, no, the windows we can get rid of because they are uh, transparent on the inside. So we'll just delete those. That way, they won't be visible on the inside and the Kerbals can see throughout them see out through them. Okay, one thing we'll note is that the seats are sort of not oriented right here, right? Here the top is uh, in the Y positive direction. Here the top the of the seats is in this direction. So we want to rotate this whole thing in the Z axis by 90 degrees this way. So the headrests should be in positive Y. And I'll just temporarily not render this mesh. mesh. Can you see how that is? Okay, the seats are like that now. Okay, I think right now we've got the stuff oriented the way we need it. So we can get rid of the original Lynx capsule here and work with what we've got. Okay, so we could delete the pod exterior, but it's actually the carrier for the whole thing, so we'll just leave it alone. It won't be visible. Actually, uh, that's a good thing to talk about. Let's bring back the Lynx capsule. Note that it's on layer Kerbals, so we want this on layer Kerbals as well. Let's uh, go through. Everything you'll note here is on layer Kerbals. And so this one, all of these, everything, including the seats, uh, can we just select hierarchy here? Select children. Okay, so all these things we want in layer Kerbals, layer 16. Yes, change children, everything. And we verify that everything is in layer Kerbals. And I'm going to delete that. Interiors, I have not done much. So, I, in fact, the pass-through system is preferred because I don't have to do these interiors much that way. But at this point, you can sort of mock up like if you want panels and stuff like that, you could bring in like KSP assets. Uh, well, we can go with part tools. You can see that the stock parts that are available, like the cupola internal, we can spawn it. Let me see, there it is. There it is. That's the internal of the cupola in Kerbal Space Program. As long as you have the squad parts in Kerbal Space, in the game data folder that you specify in part tools, you can get the internals and modify them in here. And so, and we've got a heading indicator there. And so all the stuff like the little indicators in the pods, you can bring in. And also you can bring in uh, parts in the, uh, from raster prop monitor and ASAP props. But you'll note that there's this internal space script that is used to write the configuration of all those props that are sort of animated, like the dials and the uh, switches, things you can interact with, things that change in the cockpit, like uh, like the speedometer and altimeter and things like that. Uh, those, you will need to use this internal space script. I'm not going to cover that because I don't have much experience with it. Uh, in fact, I've generally written that file manually rather than try to uh, export it like that. but. Now, once I figure that out, I'll tell you about it. <laughs> but right now, I'm not uh, experienced with it yet. So we'll do the parts that I can talk about. Uh, the first thing we can do is you can see the seat A, B, C, D. 
and we'll need E, F, and G because there are seven seats here. And the thing is, forward, the forward view of the Kerbal is the blue arrow. The head of the Kerbal is pointing in the upper uh, Y axis, the green arrow. So uh, let's start with seat A. And uh, well, that seat D was pretty good, actually. Then we'll need to just turn all these back to pointing straight out because we have them oriented like that. That's probably the easiest. And we'll put them in zero in the z-axis. Oh, this is a little bit offset, isn't it? Uh, oh, that's the y-axis, sorry. Okay. The Kerbals, uh, these seats are shaped for humans, so the Kerbals are going to look real small in them. We could tilt them down a little bit, but... Um, let me, in fact, uh, delete these other seats, and we'll start off with this one as a basis. The important thing is, again, it's in layer Kerbals. And sure, I'll tilt it down just a little bit to match the sort of orientation of the seat. Um, let's say 5 degrees. Okay, so we've got one there, and we're going to duplicate. And it could be named like that, but it could also be named seat B. It's up to you. And I am going to rename the seats A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So these, when we call it seat, what we really mean is this vector that tells the program how to place the Kerbals. And that there is a seat available. So I'll just leave it like that. Oh, uh, maybe I should just delete the exterior mesh. Let's just, uh, well, again, it's the carrier for things, but well, yeah, let's just remove that mesh. We just want the interior. These pod tiles are not going to show up in the interior. I'll delete that part. I'll delete this pod RCS part. Uh, I'll delete the pod 1 part. Otherwise, all those will create more textures for the model and everything. So we do want the hatch on the inside. The windows are blank. Okay, I think that's fine. So right and save. Okay, I think that does it for what we need to do in Unity. Uh, but next up, we are going to write the configuration files for Kerbal Space Program. And that deserves its own video. So that will tell Kerbal Space Program how to use all these parts. And we'll do that next time. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.